In this video, we'll state and prove the nested rectangle property, which is something very analogous to the nested interval property from the study of real analysis of a single real variable. So we already know what a, a closed rectangle is. So let me state the theorem. So um, um, a nested sequence of non-empty closed rectangles is has non-empty intersection. And in terms of formulas, we can write this as follows, i.e., given a nested sequence of closed rectangles, so R1, which contains R2, which contains R3, and so on, infinitely many times, we can take the intersection of all of these closed rectangles, and that intersection is not empty. This is the statement of the theorem. We already know that this is true um, in Euclidean space when we deal with one dimension. So this statement is true for any finite dimension. So technically this should say a nested sequence of non-empty closed rectangles in Rn has non-empty intersection for all n. So the proof of this theorem, which we'll actually give in full, is it heavily relies on the one-dimensional case which we should be familiar with. So um, for each so for each i between 1 all the way up to n, we can take these rectangles, so here's a little picture of these rectangles. You know, they could be look, look something like this, and they get smaller and smaller, and I can't really draw any more than that. Um, so here's R1, R2, R3, and so on. So for each coordinate, we can take the projection of each of these rectangles, let's say down in this direction and to the right in this direction, and we'll acquire intervals in each direction here. So for instance, R1, the first interval might look like this, and here, the first interval in the second direction might look something like this. And we can do this for each of the successive rectangles as well. So this, so for each i, we set, um, for each i, pi, the projection onto the ith coordinate of each of these rectangles. Let's call them rk. And look at the set of all of these k. Is a nested sequence of closed intervals. So going back to this little picture, if let's say the um, second rectangle was drawn in pink, then the second interval would look something like we would project it onto the first factor. That would look something like this, for instance. And similarly, in this direction, we can project and we'd get a nested interval, uh, a nested sequence of intervals in all of the different coordinates. So here's the next one. And let's see, here's the next one. So the theorem relies heavily on the one-dimensional case, which we will assume is true. Therefore, by the nested interval property, we know that the intersection of all of these projections is non-empty. Therefore, there exists some number, let's call it, for instance, ci, in the intersection of all of these different pi i's over all k. Now we make the claim that 
We know that this is true for each i, so we can just take the associated element. So the claim would be set c equal to c1 all the way up to cn. And the claim is that this element is exactly in the intersection of all of these original rectangles. So for a proof of this claim, what we know is that each of the CIs is in, because it's in the infinite intersection, it has to be in every single one of its components. So we know, so the, a little mini proof of this um, is that CI is an element of pi i r k for all k. And therefore, we know that the um, that CI, because it's in all of these, that the element C, this element C, is exactly in the product of all of these intervals as well. So that would look something like um, P pi 1 RK uh, cross all the way up to pi n r k. This is also true for all k. And because this is true for all k, this implies that c is in the intersection of all of these. pi 1 r k cross all the way up to pi n r k. And now here we have the intersection over all k, so we've lost the quantifier for all k. And this, you can check, is contained in, oh, actually, this, um, this precisely equals, right? This precisely equals the uh, actual product. So this is equal to the intersection of the RKs. I mean, right? RK is decomposed into its different factors. And RK is precisely the product of all of those factors. So this shows that C is exactly in the intersection of all of these RKs, and hence is non-empty, which is what we wanted to show to begin with. So that's the end of the proof, and it shows that the nested interval property has a natural generalization for any dimension.